Good afternoon. A friend of mine recently described something in his life as a difficult blessing. Now, that might sound like an oxymoron, because blessings are supposed to be positive, right? When something good or wonderful comes our way, we say, what a blessing. But we're, if we're in the midst of a struggle or a time of difficulty, we might say something like, well, this must be my cross to bear, or I need God's strength. Perhaps we need to rethink what it means to receive God's blessing. We get a hint of this in the most famous list of blessings that we find in the Bible, the Beatitudes, which is how Jesus began his Sermon on the Mount. We find them in Matthew's Gospel in the fifth chapter. Now, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus takes many things and turns them upside down. We pray for our enemies. We bless those who persecute us. If someone strikes us, we turn the other cheek. If you curse someone, it's the same thing as murder. If you look lustfully at someone, it's the same thing as adultery. These are the kinds of things that Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. So when Jesus is talking about things that are basically the opposite of the way you would typically think of them, it makes sense that his definition of a blessing is not what you would expect. So, according to the Beatitudes, who does Jesus say are blessed? Well, he says, blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. And we'll say, sure, that makes sense. Those are all good things. But then he goes on to say, blessed are the poor in spirit, Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Those don't normally seem to qualify as blessings for us. And then we get to the real kicker. Jesus says, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Now, I don't care why you're being persecuted, for righteousness or for any other thing. Being persecuted certainly seems to be the exact opposite of a blessing. Now, you could respond and say that Jesus is not telling us that we're blessed when we mourn or when we're meek or when we're persecuted. Jesus is telling us that when we find ourselves in such situations, God sends us a blessing. For example, he sends us comfort. He tells us we'll inherit the earth or receive the kingdom of heaven. And that's true. That is what Jesus says. But Jesus does not say you will no longer mourn. He does not say you're not going to be persecuted anymore. He only tells us that in the midst of such struggles, God will provide for us. But when I'm talking about difficult blessings, I want to go one step further. I'm not just saying that God's blessings come to us in difficult times. I'm saying that the blessings themselves may be difficult to deal with. Being blessed by God does not always give us the warm, fuzzy feelings that we like so much. We see a perfect example of this in Mary, the mother of Jesus. When the angel came to tell her that she would have a child, she, the angel told Mary that she was highly favored by God. And when Mary went and told her relative Elizabeth that she would give birth to the Messiah, Elizabeth called her blessed. In fact, Mary being blessed has almost become part of her name. Our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters refer to her as the Blessed Virgin Mary. But what kind of blessing was it that the Blessed Virgin Mary received? It was a blessing that almost got her stoned to death for having premarital sex. It was a blessing that meant she had to give birth far away from home in a place where animals are supposed to be living. It was a blessing that the prophet Simeon told her a sword would pierce her soul because of her child. It was a blessing that Mary had to stand at the foot of a cross to watch her son be tortured to death. No, the blessing of being the mother of Jesus Christ certainly was not a path that was lined with daisies and sunshine. And being blessed by God might be the same thing for you as well. It's easy for us to make the mistake 
when we're facing difficult circumstances or when we consider an aspect of our life that is challenging, to put it lightly. Even if we don't consider these things to be a curse, we might think that these are the things that interfere with God's good plan for our life. Now, the reality might be different from that. It may be that which you're struggling with is exactly what God has in mind for you. That difficulty may be the avenue through which God's blessing comes to you. And this is our challenge. The challenge is not only to believe that God will be with us as we pass through the rivers or through the fire, as Isaiah chapter 43 puts it. The challenge is to recognize that perhaps those raging waters and that blazing inferno in your life may actually be God's blessing. And as you go through them, you may discover that these hardships are the vehicles through which God is going to make amazing things happen. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, we thank you for our blessings. Help us to thank you even for our difficult blessings. Give us the ability to recognize that even or especially through them, we can know the goodness of your love and mercy and grace. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.